tell me just a little bit about your farm. Throw me, throw me some numbers. How many cows? How many acres? Okay, so uh, first of all, the farm is run uh, uh, by my brother, my son, and myself. We have uh, two other full-time employees and about 12 part-time employees. At the present time, uh, we're milking 430 cows three times a day. We have about 850 head uh, in total, including those milking cows plus some uh, younger stock. And we crop about 800 acres growing uh, corn and hay that we use uh, entirely for feeding the cows. We're in a barn here. The, barn, the cows look very comfortable. Um, why is that important? Well, uh, the last uh, 10 or 15 years, uh, people have realized in the industry how uh, animal welfare and cow comfort, how important it is to uh, maintaining a healthy, productive herd. And there's been a lot of uh, research and technology come down the pipe to support this and to design facilities that enable cows to have a lot of room to lie down, a lot of room to eat, clean, fresh air, as much natural light as uh, possible. Uh, facilities are designed uh, because we, we know we have uh, dominant cows, uh, cows that uh, can push cows away from waters or, or the, the, the feeding rail. So we want to make sure that they have enough space that those uh, less aggressive cows feel comfortable in the environment too. So uh, dimensions and stall size, no dead-ended alleyways, uh, all come into designing uh, facilities. So it's an economic decision as well as a, a sort of a moral decision. Well, right? that's right, and they, the two go, the, go hand in hand. We know if cows are going to maintain a long productive life, uh, then you can't have facilities that are going to injure them. Uh, you can't have facilities that are going to uh, limit uh, their production. I just noticed back here you've got some cows laying down in, in um, sand. Why is that? Well, sand uh, has proven to be uh, the gold standard for cows in freestall barns, which uh, uh, this barn is. It's very comfortable for the cows. It's like uh, they're lying on a beach, and it's also a very inorganic material, very difficult to grow bacteria in sand, which leads to much better utter health for the cows. Right. And you've got sort of like a robot mucker that goes in through here, right? Well, it's a uh, automatic scrapers, uh, that's right, that uh, we have them set at every hour. They'll clean those alleyways so cows aren't standing in uh, any manure. Comes to the center of the barn, gets pumped over into two uh, storage facilities that we empty and put on the uh, land a couple of times a year. Now let's talk a little bit about technology. The cows, uh, from what I understand, are wearing Fitbits. They've got pedometers on, right? <laughs> That's correct. Uh, and there's different variations of this technology. Some, some of the technology requires neck bands. In our particular case, we have pedometers on them. Right. Uh, so when the cow comes into the milking area, we have readers that record that information that's on the pedometer. The information we're getting will be activity. It'll be uh, conductivity of the milk. If a cow has an udder infection, the conductivity of the milk is going to uh, rise. It'll tell us uh, how well the people that are doing the milking are doing, how long those milking units are on it, whether the cows are prepped properly, stimulated in order to milk. The activity is important in that cows show heat signs. All the breeding here is done artificially, so we have to know when these cows are cycling and when to breed them using uh, frozen semen. Uh, so we can typically get a report uh, a couple of times a day, go to the computer and say, give me the cows that are more active than uh, they have been in the previous two or three days, and these are cows that are probably in heat. Conversely, if you have a cow that comes in is less active, her production is down, the computer will flag that cow as saying, this cow is not feeling too good, you better go out there and find her and, and do some follow-up uh, treatment. So that type of technology, there's technology out there that records rumination of cows, They're, how uh, the, their digestive system is uh, working, and uh, that can just give you a heads up on uh, this cow is not feeling too good. Uh, again, you want to go out there and just check up on her and see what uh, what problems she might be having. 
Oh, this is more like a spa, that per a cow spa. With, <laughs> well, that that's our goal uh, to come into a barn and the, the cows are chewing their cud, which is an indication that their uh, digestive system is working properly. Uh, when you hear a cow mooing or, or bellowing, that's usually a sign something's not right. She's uh, hungry. She's thirsty. She's in heat. Uh, so you go into a barn that's nice and quiet, and everybody's lying down. That's a, that's a good sign. Cool. I want to talk a little about technology and feed. There, there's different cows here eating different feed here, and that's quite uh, pro programmatic. Is that right? Well, it's uh, we have we work very closely with the nutritionist. We feed here on this farm five, uh, six different ingredients: uh, corn silage, haylage, dry corn, some soybean meal, some cottonseed. And the, depending on the stage of lactate or the stage of a cow's life, whether she's a young heifer, an older heifer, a milking cow, a cow that uh, is dry waiting to calve, we formulate different rations because we know uh, through research that they have different requirements. If we have a cow that's milking, say, 40 liters a day, and she's producing 4% butterfat milk. There's a lot of energy that she's expelling every day. She needs a lot of calories to maintain that level of production and not lose body weight. So uh, it's become very scientific and, and uh, we're analyzing the feed. We know uh, the components of the feed, the protein, the, uh, the energy, the fiber content, the mineral content. And we have to work with the nutritionist to balance those rations and deliver to the cow what she what she needs. And these cows aren't pasturing, right? No, they're in this barn uh, all year round. Pasturing is problematic here in Ontario for bigger herds. Uh, we would need infrastructure, even if we pastured, we need infrastructure in place to feed cows out of storage for six or seven months of the year anyway. Uh, you need a much bigger land base if you're gonna pasture. You have to contend with some unpredictable things if you run into a summer where you have six weeks of dry, dry weather and the pasture doesn't grow, then what do you do? So for economic uh, reasons, uh, it's not like New Zealand or Australia where you can pasture most of the year or all year round. Uh, we need buildings to shelter these cows in the winter time from the elements. So the industry has moved to a situation where well, we have to have all this infrastructure in place and it's much easier just to do it 12, uh, 12 months of the year than to try and split it up. Cool. Now you've been doing this in your family for decades now, right? <laughs> yes, my dad uh, mother started this farm in 1947, so I'm the second generation, my son is the third generation. Well, we talked a lot about technology, we talked about the shift towards comfortable cows. What else has been sort of the major shifts you've seen? The major shifts uh, we've seen, uh, I refer to it as the Walmartization of the industry. Uh, fewer and fewer dairy farms, uh, but they're, the ones that are left are bigger and probably producing uh, the same amount of, uh, of milk. I've seen a quick adaptation of technology. Uh, the farmers uh, are very quick if they see something out there, uh, a research or their neighbors are doing that's working, they're very quick to uh, adapt to it. So th th those are probably the two major shifts I've seen. Great. Thanks very much. My pleasure.